Welcome back to the Pin Pals Podcast, the podcast that interviews pin makers to learn their journey through the pin game. I'm your host, Eric, from Warrior Pins, and thanks for lending me your ears today. This episode features Jessica, aka Kimchi Creative. If you aren't familiar with Kimchi Creative, they were also on the enamel pin panel from San Diego Comic Con, episode 28, which I highly recommend you checking out. Uh, We chat about so many fun topics on this episode, Jess's pin journey and how it actually started with making shirts, which I believe she talks about on the panel, Uh, branching out beyond pins and making products like Ida jackets, notepads, webcam covers. It's pretty funny. Uh, Her approach to social media, selling on Pop Shop Live, and so much more. We did have some technical difficulties, so apologize if you can pick up on those hiccups. Apparently, Zoom capped the amount of time that you can chat with someone on their free version, so we ended up doing this interview in two parts. Now, before we get into the pinversation, I want to shout out my Buy Me A Coffee crew, more specifically our two newest members, Rob from Turtle Tracks and Vince from Pindustries. Both of you dudes appreciate all the support that you've shown just, you know, throughout the comments and stuff like that, but to also take it to the next level and to become a buy me a coffee patron i appreciate you guys thank you so much for the support if you the listener ever feel so inclined to support the podcast you can do so by literally buying me a cup of coffee or becoming a monthly supporter on the buy me a coffee page it's like patreon but way more hip Uh, there's a lot of fun rewards and perks and you can do it on the monthly basis or you can just kind of you know tip me one off and be done with it and feel good about it you know i'll be forever grateful (laughs) that i've received your tip but um that did not sound right have fun with that one we're just gonna leave that in there you know Uh, a fun little perk of trying to do this intro live in one take or not one take as few takes as possible (laughs) Um, but yeah, that's buymeacoffee.com slash podcast. Uh, the link will also be in the show notes or the description wherever you're checking this out. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You get access to the Discord, uh, which is bumping. It's at an all-time high in terms of popularity, buzz. It's, it's, it's really buzzing, if you will. Um, but you know, if buy me a coffee, if something like that isn't up your alley, you can still show support to the podcast by sharing it with a friend or two, leaving a review, telling the world kind of why you enjoy the podcast or maybe why you hate the podcast, rating it five stars on Apple Podcasts, leaving comments on YouTube, following us on Instagram and all that stuff. It's free. It only takes a few minutes uh, and anything would be major help to the podcast. Uh, thank you in advance. Finally, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of this podcast, Your Stuff Made. They are an artist-owned manufacturer of pins, patches, coins, socks, shirts, custom boxes and mailers, like literally anything. You name it, they can make it. And the best part about Your Stuff Made, it's not the prices, even though they are pretty low. It's not the communication, even though it is clear, consistent, and concise. It's the fact that they're manufacturing products in an ethical manner. It's better for the planet, it's better for your company, and it's better for your customers to know that they're helping make a difference. If you have a couple designs ready to turn into pins or patches or whatever, visit yourstuffmade.com and fill out a quote. Be sure to select Pin Pals as their referral so they know that I sent you. Again, the website is yourstuffmade.com. So what are you waiting for? Halloween and Christmas? And all those other holidays, they're right around the corner. I know you need pins, so go ahead and contact Your Stuff Made today. Thanks again for tuning into the Pin Pals podcast. Remember, it's the little things in life. Now let's jump into my conversation with my pin pal, Kimchi Creative. Welcome to Pin Pals. Jess, how's it going? <laughs> going good. We're recording on Monday, so it's a good kick off to the week anyways (laughs) yes i'm definitely excited kicking off the week on a on a great foot um yes yeah how was your weekend um a little bit exhausting we had a big pop shop show and uh gonna be doing another market this weekend so it's stacking itself a little bit but that's a good thing you know so yeah staying busy is a good thing yeah and it's Better all pin related stuff too. 
Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we're about, what is it, two or three weeks f- uh, removed from speaking at a panel. San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. How <laughs> crazy is that? Our peak. <laughs> <laughs> It took uh, six years to get to to my peak. Jeez. No. Well, the next step is the booth, right? That's the old booth plus panel, like a VB create, uh, you know, goal. (laughs) That would be awesome. One day we can dream. If they can do it, we can do it. Exactly. And now we have a small connect. (laughs) Yeah, for real. I always thought it would be cool if I could do set up like a pin pals booth either at like a Patches and Pins Expo or at a a con of some sort yeah. and just be able to have like different merch from all the different guests and somehow come up with like a really cool, neat booth that's kind of like, oh, you can grab from this, this, this and that. And logistically speaking, I don't know how it would work because everyone would have to send me pins and then I would probably would want to get a cut for, you know, selling pins on their behalf. Well, or... you should do like a live show where the booth comes to you at your booth and you do like a live and they can bring their merch with them. Oh, there you go. Are you advocating for a pop shop live right now? Um, well, not just on a pop shop, at a con <laughs> too. <laughs> uh well we'll definitely get to to all that stuff later we'll brainstorm Um, it later we'll work out the details (laughs) yeah 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 for sure because uh i have a lot of ideas but uh let's just get right into it why don't you tell the listeners and the viewers who you are and a little bit about your pin shop kimchi creative yeah my name is jessica i am the solo act for kimchi creative uh, which is basically like fandom curios um for any type of fandom whether it be like comics or anime or um well i have one k-pop one (laughs) um bunnies now uh so slowly starting to um go into other fandoms but it's basically just a fandom curio pin shop at this point then slowly expanding to other products too so we'll see where the adventure takes us but it's been a good ride (laughs) so far and um i love your shop i love your style i love all the different fandoms that you're touching on a lot of it resonates with me um but what i think is really cool is and we'll get into a little bit later but what you just said at the very end getting into other products like you you just announced a pre-sale for a jacket during our panel uh at san diego comic-con which you can listen to episode uh 28 i think it is (laughs) (laughs) um you talk a little bit about making cork boards custom cork boards and like talking to your manufacturer about that so that's really cool that you kind of have your 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 sights set on just beyond pins, just a larger picture, you know, kind of like the natural progression of a business. You start with one thing, but then you start branching off into other things. So I think that's kind of cool. I think it's just I think you get excited about what other mediums can do as well, because like people never thought enamel pins could be like such like an expansive medium, I guess. But now you're seeing it literally on a like hat and like there's a whole like market thing now for hats and pins, you know? So I think seeing where pins has gone is really cool, but I guess like, it's just also too, when you spend, it takes me so long to draw one thing that it's just a little bit more feasible for me. Um, since I also work full time too, to be able to apply that design to kind of multiple things. So that like a little bit helps me keep up with growing, but with a pace that I can do currently with my current work schedule and everything. Um, but it's just really cool. Cause once you start to like figure out how to do enamel pins, you're like, okay, well, what else can you do? Like I figured out how to do this manufacturing process, figuring out how to do something else with manufacturing must be similar. So you kind of like go off on there. It's, it's so interesting though. It is really interesting. So right off the bat, I got to ask you, um, because I've, I've come across this myself, wanting to reuse my designs uh, for other applications, you know, yeah. beyond just pins and stickers, which is pretty much what everyone in this space is doing. Right. Um, talk to me about your approach for kind of uh, using these designs and giving these old designs new life. How do you go about that? Um, well, I guess I just try, I think for me to, um, 
pins can be like a useful thing and they're also kind of like a smaller decorative piece so also when I try to expand them into like another product I like I really enjoy products that have use um so like I just tried note notepads um I'm looking at a couple other things I don't want to give away yet but um I like things that have use and I just um also did a sell for um the little sliding video camera covers I saw Um, that. Yes. Yeah. It's like so useful. I was like, oh my God, I've been living with a post-it note all my life. Why didn't I look at this sooner? (laughs) Um, I could have been a step above the whole time. Um, So like things like that, where it like brings, especially when it comes to fandoms, like it brings in that love that you can integrate into like your everyday life that brings like that little spark of joy to your your everyday life, but it still is useful, you know? Um, So for me, it's just kind of like with notepads, it's kind of just reconfiguring. Obviously you can't just put slap on a pin design and there you go, put lines on it. It's a notepad. I mean, I guess you can, but it's not quite interesting. So it's like reconfiguring like, okay, well maybe now you have like a little environment that goes with it. So why you don't have to sketch the whole thing. You just sketch like a little bit of an environment, which makes it like a new enticing product that's fresh. And um, I think it comes to just either adding or taking away to make it more feasible for whatever you're deciding to ap- apply it to. Hmm. Um, but it would really depend on the product. Yeah. But it, yeah. It definitely depends on the product, but good for you for actually taking the plunge and, and trying these new products. Um, I love the notepad. Uh, I tried to pull up your website, but we were having issues before our, our, our <laughs> yeah. call. And I'm having issues like Google's not working. So I'm just kind of scrolling through your feed right now. But I love this the session little is notepad. cursed. <laughs> <laughs> this is cursed. That is cursed. <laughs> uh, it's, and I think you're going to be like episode 31 if everything goes according to plan. Not so it's 13? Like, no, I'm just no. like. <laughs> the opposite, but hopefully the 30s. You know, it doesn't, doesn't yeah, yeah. begin with the whole curse there. <laughs> but yeah, that, the notepads and the uh, the webcam covers, I love that. That's cute. That was like such a surprise hit for me. Really? I, Tell I me like, about that. I had the idea and I just thought it was so funny. Like, I'm an only child, so I make myself laugh most of the time. But I just thought it was so funny. I was like, well, I don't know if I can sell these very well, but I think it's funny. <laughs> So I'm doing this for me and thank God it's like a smaller, cheaper product than making enamel pins. So I was like, oh, it's doable. Um, so I ended up making them. I put, I think about 60% of the stock on my first pop shop and it totally sold out. I was shocked. Everyone thought it was so funny. And so I love that it was engaging other people, <laughs> but um I think that's part of like the game a little, well, I guess you play this little, a little bit of game when you do small business stuff. It's you want to make stuff that you love, but if you're attempting to do it full time, you kind of give and take about like, well, what can you actually sell and what can actually make money? But um, I've been really lucky thus far that most of the stuff that I like also <laughs> does okay. So I've been very, very fortunate in this aspect. Yeah. Isn't that cool though? How like your shop is essentially a reflection of your personality. You know, it's, it goes beyond just kind of like what you sell, but the things that you post um, and oh, your yeah. style and stuff like that, it's like an extension of you. So a lot of the times you're, you're not, people aren't just like buying the product, they're buying into the brand and into the person behind the, the brand. And um, that's how oh, we yeah. build communities. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. And I think it's like, I think a little bit when um, customers look at the design, they can tell if it was a money grab or if it was like that you're truly a fan of that thing. Um, Because I literally only have one design in my shop that I'm not a fan of personally. Um, And I drew because I basically made the design for another friend. Um, And that pin is like one of the slowest pins in my shop. So I think they can kind of tell when it's just something that you do versus something you really engage in and really enjoy yourself. And it kind of extends to when you guys or you do a live show or when you do a, a booth, when they come up, they're like, oh, my God, like this and this and pen. you're like, I know, wasn't that episode crazy? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> so it's just like this great, like you said, like kind of reach with the community and stuff that you actually are not just, yeah, it's my pin community. It's like, I'm also uh, like involved in that community as well with you. So it creates this like great 
like welcoming, no gatekeeping and all that stuff, you know? So it's <laughs> like really nice. Yeah. <laughs> is there a particular uh, fandom that your shop is hitting that you, that just is m- the most engaging out of all of them? Um, it's a little bit of a mix. I think currently um, my magical commun- inspired community is um, definitely where I get the most feedback and they're the most active uh like with commenting and following but I think that's just mainly also because um initially when I first started out and I made my first pins I made I think like 13 in a spell set and then I attended this convention called leaky con which if you don't know it's a Harry Potter only convention which is very niche <laughs> so um that's kind of how I got my start but I naturally like things outside of this fandom so I wanted once the enamel pins took off to do a lot of uh other designs but I think still that main like basis niche community that I have it's still very very strong and very active and because they've uh been so supportive of me so long like our friendships have grown like for a a couple of years now so we feel very connected um while when it comes to the other ones I'm definitely having to more target I guess like oh like I made Star Trek inspired pins and I was like do not have Star Trek fans like in my in my community right now so I'm a little bit more like oh I'm going to um LA Comic Con these might be great pins to bring because I don't know any of these people yet so it's trying to build different other communities as well but when you have a following that's following you for like one particular type of fandom it is hard to grow out but you shouldn't be scared of it you know like it's if you love it like you love it like people you know build it and they will come kind of thing um so I I think but to answer your question yeah I think it's definitely more the magical community currently (laughs) currently not to say the other ones aren't going strong but (laughs) right but because you saw the most engagement, you know, coming from the magical community, do you kind of lean more on creating stuff for them? Like um, if you were to split your resources, something like that, like 70, 30 percent, like in that community I, or. I think because the series, uh, I have like a noodle runaway series, which is based on like a magical creature off of the fandom, um, because that's what's garnered like the most following I've kind of limited it to just one new one a month so the max they would get in a year is maybe 12 if I can keep up (laughs) because I have work and stuff too um but I think if you had asked me that same question a year and a half ago it might have been true but as of recently I've really tried to emphasize um building the other aspects of it as well um and I think in this last month I've really started to concentrate a little or try to make myself mentally concentrate more on also creating unique designs that have nothing to do with fandoms just to like expand my creative bubble a little bit more. Um, but I think I've gotten better about like splitting the aspects up again. Cause like, I don't, I myself don't feel that 50% of my own fandomness is only for that one. So yeah, I have to serve my own fandomness too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but that's really cool. You're still, you know, consistently releasing for that fandom as well as doing other things, uh, you know, to grow as a pin shop and as an artist and expand yeah. the new territory and stuff like that. And I think that's important. You know, if you want to grow, um, you got to be willing to invest in yourself and your art, um, especially when it's not, you know, super niche or whatever phantom you get yeah the most engagement for not to say if you're like a hundred percent like i love magical world elements like there's whole shops just like magic inspired you know so it's not to say you can't do it i just personally because i like so many things i want them all in my life so (laughs) so that's just a me problem but um yeah (laughs) i love it uh what year did you start your kimchi creative um, as kimchi creative, I think it started around 2018, 2019, because I actually was doing illustrations for my friend's t-shirt company. Um, but I didn't get into pins until I think end of 2019. Um, basically 
um, my friend had been doing apparel under Bright Threads Co. for a while and she didn't know about cons and I had already known about them because I attended them and I loved cosplaying at them and stuff. So I made her go to one with me and she's like, oh my God, I didn't know this was a thing. I was like, yes, look at all these ones. You could totally have a booth here. I had also just had this experience of buying a t-shirt at a convention and I watched it one time and it got like crusty and gross so <laughs> with my friend her shirts were super soft I was like yes you would do so well here your stuff's high quality like so her being really excited signed up for a booth and then she called me the next day saying Jessica I basically got too excited I'd signed up for a booth I only have five designs I don't have enough designs for a booth can you you know jump in and help draw some shirts so uh, I was with her for about two years drawing and then um She's how I found out about LeakyCon. I didn't even know about LeakyCon at that point. And we had done um, LeakyCon for two years in a row where she then um, decided to go on to other adventures in her life. And she's like, you know what? You should keep doing this. Like for our last LeakyCon, you know, and I'd already found out I was going to move to LA. She's like, why don't you do enamel pins? Like, you know, we had this problem with stock room, just finding room to stock all, all of this apparel LA's way small apartments, way more expensive. You know, enamel pin, one size fits all. Like you could do it in a studio apartment. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. So I had this deadline of our final leaky con together where I busted out these 13 designs. Um, so that was like my first experience with selling pins. So we were selling shirts and pins at this last leaky con we were doing together. So I was like, oh my God, this is great. I love this. It's so much fun. I should... I should get more into this. And then COVID happened. Oh. <laughs> so I moved to LA with like this dream. And well, I moved to LA for a job offer, but I also had this dream in my heart that I was going to come out here, do enamel pins, like go to all the conventions. I'm going to make new friends through conventions. And then COVID happened. And I was like, well, I ain't meaning anyone. <laughs> I'm staying home by myself all the time. So it really changed what I thought my plans were for Kimchi Creative. <laughs> but um actually like with pop shop and everything and with there literally being nothing else to do during COVID it gave me like kind of the time to draw more to like really look at hey if I really want to grow this like I can do this and I can do this um I think the second year of COVID pop shop came around um which totally changed my world um and my approach to selling online um, so that was like a huge blessing so even though COVID was like kind of like a horrible experience when it came to making me concentrate on my business and like growing. Um, it definitely was a huge help to me. So um, it was a weird journey, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, you had, so it sounds like you had some experience um, with designing, working with manufacturers, selling at events and stuff like that, that it wasn't too much of a leap to kind of go into selling pins or was it? It was ever so slightly different. It was, I, I would thank God was exposed and um, that my friend figured out how to buy booths, who you contact. So I was like, oh, this is how you get a booth. Cause up until then, like I really had not looked at it at all in that sense. I was just like, wow, it's really cool. I would love to sell at a convention, but like, what would I sell? Um, so that's how I figured out that part from her, but she actually would purchase the shirts in bulk and she would cut the vinyl she had a huge heat press so we didn't work with the manufacturer in that sense I literally just drew it and sent it to her and then she would do the rest of it and I would help her sell it convention oh shit super DIY yeah it was really DIY but I think people loved it you know um it also kept costs like super low um but when it came to like finding a manufacturer and things like that, when I decided to go off and do enamel pins, I was still like YouTubing, like Googling the shit out of everything. We didn't have TikTok at that point, so I couldn't use that as a learning resource. Um, but you didn't have our panel to listen to to learn about how. No, exactly. Makers. There was no <laughs> pin podcast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I was trying to figure everything out. It was definitely like a huge learning curve, um, especially cause I, some, there's feels something very per permanent about enamel pins that like, oh, if I mess up a shirt, at least I could donate it and someone out there could get used. But with enamel pins, I was like, no one knows who I am. And if I mess it up, who's going to want this, like this pin? I don't know. <laughs> so it felt like a little bit more stressful, but it was a still, still a big learning curve. I felt like when I started doing enamel pins. What are some important things that, uh, what are some, 
like important things to remember or to keep in mind when you're communicating with the manufacturer? Because I'm sure you've, you know. Are you bringing up my story? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to grill me on my story? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope, nope, not at all. Just trying to give uh, expand on the story. <laughs> you know, we'll give the, we'll go into the, to 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 everything. But I'm curious because you know a lot of people new into the game. You know, they're always making mistakes. You know, they're not crossing the T's or dotting the I's like we were right. said in the panel or anything like that. So I just kind of wanted to know uh, your trials and tribulations <laughs> with the manufacturer. My recent trials and tribulations. Um, <laughs> I think when it came to pins, um, a lot of the trials and tribulations, thank God, were a little bit um, smoothed over because the second manufacturer I ended up getting has been very, very kind to me. The first one has uh, was a little bit difficult. I think that's a huge trial and tribulation is just finding a good manufacturer you trust. Um, because after I noticed the quality of the, like the first round, I was like, wow, amazing pins. But at the same time, I had literally like, I was kind of like starry eyed because they were my first pins. And now looking at them, I was like, oh, <laughs> Like, maybe not the best. I could have done better. Um, but because I was so like excited that I made something, um, I was like, oh my God, amazing. <laughs> um, so I think also as you like continue to grow, like your taste in the manufacturer might change as well. Um, but I was really lucky that I had a friend suggest the second manufacturer that I work with now. Um, but I think pan picking out Pantone colors was such, such a huge and still is such a huge trial and tribulation for me. Um, I hate picking colors <laughs> um, with a passion. Like if I could afford or just had someone that enjoyed that, I'd be hitting them up so fast. Um, <laughs> that thing, um, I think building my own website was like a huge thing. Um, I am kind of, um, I know if I start to feel busy or overwhelmed and things are working, it's very difficult for me to switch platforms. So I knew should not start on Etsy because if I get comfortable, even if I hate it, I'm not gonna move. I'll feel so overwhelmed at the thought of moving, I won't. So I started just having my own website, um, which thank God I did because I really enjoy having um, my own website and Etsy seems like it's turning into a thing. So that's been really great. <laughs> we could do a whole other podcast about the I know. state of Etsy. It's, yeah, it's, but every time I see it now, when someone's like, oh, I'm thinking about leaving Etsy, I was like, I use Shopify, hit me up if you want to build a website. <laughs> <laughs> like it's my other side hustle now. Um, so that was like a huge thing for me um, was learning how to build and use Shopify, but it's been a wonderful experience. I highly encourage anyone to do it. It's very user-friendly once you get going. Um, Not sponsored by Shopify. Yeah, not Let's sponsored see. by call me Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> call me. Everyone call me. mentions it on the website yeah, exactly. or on the podcast. <laughs> so, um I that was like a whole experience and then I think of like I told if you guys have if you guys haven't listened to the San Diego Comic Con <laughs> panel recording like the fifth plug for the panel. <laughs> for the one, if you haven't listened to it, you should go back and listen to it's a great episode. Uh, Link is in the <laughs> description. Yes. <laughs> but if you haven't read it, um, I reached out to another manufacturer because I was expanding to a new product. Obviously didn't have to worry about a pin because my pin guy, my pin guy knows me, knows, knows my hookup, you know. Um, but this new manufacturer for cork boards, I sent them my address without the words USA at the bottom. And but it did say the city. It did say California and it did have my zip code. Turns out um, they mailed my cork boards to Hong Kong because my address is a direct match to some random mall in Hong Kong. And my apartment number is a store in this Hong Kong mall. And apparently it has the same zip code too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The odds oh, of that what? happening. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't believe that that actually happened. That's still like. Ridiculous. No, I really hate it. I hate the whole thing. I just like when I saw the actual like Hong Kong address, I got so mad. <laughs> Inconsolable. Um, <laughs> but pretty, now that yeah. that's all cleared up, um, but those I, things do happen. They're learning curves. I had to pay $200 to redirect that shipment to me. So huge learning thing um, now when I'm looking at building all these other products. Um, just know you're going to make mistakes most of the time it's going to cost money. You're not the only one doing it. It doesn't mean you should quit. Um, cause 
especially too, if it does cost money, most likely you'll a hundred percent remember the lesson. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's just, just call it, you know, like those paid classes. We'll call yeah. it that. Business. I expense. like that. Yeah. yeah. Business um, expense. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the world of, uh, of business. Um, now I want to ask you, as you continue to kind of grow your shop and expand into different products, is it just you running the shop or do you have friends or do you pay someone to like help out? I'm just kind of curious. So I am a very, no, I wouldn't say hermit. I, I like people. Um, but with <laughs> having, <laughs> but no, no, it's not, well, it's, and it's not a but about people, but, um, I, cause I moved to LA because I had this other job offer. Um, so I moved here without knowing anyone and, um, because of COVID, I still don't really know anyone. <laughs> and the people I do know, most of them also do pins and don't live near me. So I haven't really built up this network of friends that are like, oh, I'll come over and help you pack pins if you buy pizza. Like, I don't have this. And um, I was very lucky to have met my uh, current boyfriend um, before COVID, because otherwise I would have been like this total hermit during COVID. Um, but his job is very, very demanding. Um, so he's usually also still working when I'm doing pins. So most of the time, it, like when I say one woman show, it's genuinely like a super one woman show. Um, I've probably touched, if you've ordered, I've probably touched your order. If you've asked anything, I've counted all the pins myself. Um, at conventions, I'm a little bit luckier because it's on usually on the weekend. So I'm usually able to wrangle my boyfriend to at least help me set up the booth. I might be there by myself all weekend though. Um, so it's, it's a very one woman show at the moment. I'm hoping uh, like in the future, um, it grows to the point where I could be full time to where I could hire someone, but right now it's definitely not in the budget. <laughs> yeah. So. Same here. It's not in the budget, but like sometimes yeah. you, you like during the holiday season, I'm sure you get busy and you, you know, you probably get your most amount of orders you know, around um, yeah. Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all those holidays and stuff like that. And it can become very overwhelming um, to the point where I've had past partners help me with pin orders. I've had my sister come over and like, you know, we, we package all the pins in like an assembly line and I'll just kind of like look through everything. So I'm just curious. And uh, oh, running out oh. of time. <laughs> we can always restart it. Um Oh, can't, can't, can't catch a break these days. We could always just start a random call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that. Um, um, no, I, cause one, I'm an only child too. And then I, so I don't have that help from siblings, but, um, my parents also live in Texas and, uh, they miss me very much. So my mother actually tries to use that as a, uh, way to get me back home. She's like, Oh, you're up till 2am packing. <sighs> man, if you lived closer, like, I'd love to help you out. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Mom. She's like, oh, you know, if you lived closer, like, I could, you're working so hard, I could, I could have cooked dinner for you. Like, Such a shame. I know. Oh, thanks, mom. Right? Yeah, now <laughs> she shows all that enthusiasm when you're, you know, in California. Yeah, exactly. Well, I didn't have this, like, when I was living in Texas primarily. So she's, like, this has literally been something she she definitely didn't expect this to turn into what it did. Um, I'm half Korean. Like my mom is the um, Korean influence in my genes. And so I think anyone from an Asian household really knows that usually there's this very strong idea of like, Oh, a solid career. You get a solid major, you know, things like that. And you like work your way up the ladder. Um, so when I was in school, I, I majored in film and my mom was like, you should really get a backup. Cause you know, um, so while I wanted to do marketing, um, and, um, PR as my backup, she's like, well, that's not a real backup. You should do HR. Every company needs HR. So I did HR. Um, so I think she thought forever that would be like my career trajectory. Um, so when I came to California and I was like, you know, getting excited every time something with the pins happened, mom, this happened, mom, oh, I sold this many, oh, mom. Oh, that's great. Maybe it's something you could do like on the side for like, for, you know, forever, <laughs> you know? but on the side, you know, that's a great side income. Oh, that's a great side income, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so seeing where it's grown now, she's just like, uh, 
maybe it's still a side. I'm not sure anymore. My dad's a little bit, you know, my dad's the American. He's like, oh, maybe you should quit your first job. <laughs> you know? So um, it's very interesting um, to see how their opinions about like what could be my job has like a little bit changed as stuff has grown. So it, it's I think it's become something that my mom's realized is a lot more possible, which has been really cool, especially from like an Asian Asian um, household. So <laughs> it's been really neat. That is really cool. But it also sounds like you have like really supportive parents and that's really cool. Yeah. My, well, my dad's like very like that. You live your life. You do whatever makes you happy. Like I can't say shit, like very like blunt like this, you know? So it's like, I don't like it, but you're going to do whatever you want to do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but my mom has, she's a little bit supportive. She used to be like very supportive and like whatever could provide me like a safe life, like what would definitely take care of me and things like that, which I think is where a, like a lot of like strict Asian parents come from. Like they just want their kids to be safe and have like a comfortable life. Um, but she's always encouraged my passions, even if they are on the side. Um, so um, with this growing and her like encouraging me to like, oh, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this for a pin? Um, and she actually... <laughs> Yeah, she, she like she went to uh, Area 51. She's like, have you thought about making alien pins? I'm like, mom, that's not my area. <laughs> like, you know, um, but she's so sweet. And then uh, she actually retired like a couple months ago and we were talking on the phone the other day and she's like, hey, you know, you were so stressed out about doing taxes is for your business. I was like, yeah, it's horrible figuring that oh, that's another thing. It's all the horrible. That's, I don't know how to figure out business tax. Anyways. Um, it's been a horrible, horrible experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but my mom was like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm retired now. I'm going to take classes to figure out how to do business tax. And, and then I can do them. So I was like, Oh my God, my heart, you know, like, so I was like, so overwhelmed. I was like, Oh my God, thank you. You're telling me I don't have to do them anymore. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but I was like, Oh my gosh, my mom, like, so, like, so wonderful. Um, so that part like really touched me. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And, like, really sweet. I feel like everyone, you know, has, is, is learning that skill where it's almost like a, a freelancing thing and, you know, come tax season, it's just like, hey, I'll file your taxes for you because I know how to do it. So maybe yeah. that could be something that she can do and just, you know, I don't know, make a little extra scratch. Yeah, she likes that side hustle. So this is up, totally up around. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so real quick, in the five minutes we have in this free Please. Zoom call, let's see if you can answer this. So since it's just you kind of running the shop and you have the support, good grace, good wishes from your family, um, your partner, where else do you find like the motivation and like, how do you say inspired to kind of keep the wheel churning? Um, well, I think one thing too, from listening to other creators, I definitely don't overindulge with comparing on social media too much. I think if you get too caught up on that, you're going to get burnt out no matter what your creativeness will hit a rut because you're so concentrating on like your numbers versus their numbers. Um, I think like, a year and a half ago, I totally gave up trying to figure out Instagram. Um, while I do try to stay active and like show what I'm working on and stuff like that, I don't interact with it in the sense of like, oh, well, who's this new person on the scene? How many, oh, they have more followers than me and they've only been around a year. Like stuff just happens and you know, you just have to go with the flow. Um, as long as you concentrate on your community and like what in ways to improve your business, like you'll continue improving. Um, I think also the other thing that really keeps like the creativity running is just exposing yourself to stuff outside of your own niche. Um, because I feel like if I like, even though I like comics and I like, you know, um, anime, if I only took in comics and anime, I would run out of ideas of what to do. But because like, for example, the home sweet home series, like the Hobbit door series, that just stemmed from a walk in my neighborhood during the holidays. And I was like, oh my God, look at all these cute little holiday decorations, like blah, blah, blah. And then I don't know why I love, I love round, like roundness. So I, I love a hobbit door. <laughs> I love a good hobbit door. Um, so I was like, oh my God, that would be so cute. Like the, how the hobbits decorate their houses for like the holidays. And then um, I was, I haven't made this one yet, but um, during COVID because graduations were canceled, 
everyone was high, like putting up graduation decorations to like celebrate, you know, these people because they can't have their own graduation ceremony. I was like, oh my God, I would love to do like, you know, doors that celebrate the milestones in your life too. And like little things like that. So it's not just a pin, it's a pin that commemorated like an event in your life. And it's something that you hold dear. Like I just had a friend that got married. So I have a just married hobbit door, um, things like that. So I think just engaging in stuff outside of what you would consider like your niche will help you bring in fresh ideas to that can, even if it's mash up or help inspire another idea or just seeing, um, like also just seeing other products will give you like amazing ideas too. So yeah. I think just don't keep yourself too boxed in. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Also another good tip I think would be to attend comic cons like yeah. San Diego comic con. That was the first comic con, like legit comic con that I've ever been to. And I came back feeling so inspired <laughs> just from meeting everyone, meeting everyone on the panel, getting to meet other pin makers, doing uh, the patches and pins in, in Anaheim too, just being surrounded by all that creativity and all that art. Just I'm still feeling like very inspired. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, just to kind of add to what you just said. Yeah. Let we we talked a little bit about uh, Shopify and your whole e-commerce strategy. Are you also on Etsy? You're on Etsy. I, I've never done Etsy. You're not on Etsy. Okay. I knew if I got it, I would never leave to make my own website. So I never even tried it. And hearing what I've heard, I'm like, well, thank God I didn't. Um, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> okay. It's just curious because some people, you know, they might not be super active on Etsy, but it's still another like large search engine to try and like catch, yeah. you know, random people looking for, for certain things. However, from what I've heard from people kind of making stuff for certain fandoms, for certain IPs, yeah. um, it can be there's tricky. a lot of takedowns happening. There's There's been a lot of like my friends who are making like Ninja Turtle stuff. They're getting their stuff like uh, they're getting copyright notices and whatnot. And um, it's kind of forced me to kind of deactivate some of my listings and and kind of be careful about how I like word certain things. Though I'm pretty sure these are just yeah. bots going out. You know, it's not, I guess it's not something you really have to deal with on uh, on Shopify. So that's cool. I think it's less. You can definitely still get taken down on Shopify. Um, but again, it's kind of like obviously a little bit less sensitive than Etsy. But like with all things, you have to just be careful how you're approaching your designs that it's not a rip. Like you didn't screenshot it and trace it, you know, something like that. Um but I I think there is a a benefit to Etsy if you're like really small because um, I have the basic plan on Shopify and at the time of this recording it's only thirty dollars a month um, which if you're not making even thirty dollars a month like that's not a great option for you you know um, so or if you're only making fifty you know that's not a great growth option um, there's definitely something to be said about the search searchability of like people who are like, I'm looking for this. I'm going to go to Etsy and type this in. I think that's a great exposure, especially when it comes to um, shipping overseas because Etsy handles all of that now. Um, but I think if you're like me and you know, you're, you get stressed out a little bit easy or you're lazy and you won't change, you just have to do it from the start and invest your energy into being more active on social media, doing the live events and like making sure you're getting your exposure to direct people to this solo island of a website, essentially. Um, so it just kind of depends where you want to like direct that energy because either it. way it's getting expended. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So you talked on two things, um, social media and live shows Now, and live shows can either be like an actual IRL show or, or like a pop shop live oh, show. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about those two things individually, of course. Yeah. There goes my dog. <laughs> He's cute <don't> though. <laughs> He's a cutie. How, what's your What's your approach to social media? Like, are you in it to create content that will result in sales? Are you just kind of in it to connect with your fan base? How, how, what's your approach to social media? Um. It really depends on the day <laughs> because if I roll out of bed that day and I'm not feeling it, um, <laughs> it's usually just like, a, okay, here's a picture of my pin. Um, 
but to be honest, I think more recently um, on Instagram anyways, it, it's just become a kind of like a newsletter form. Like this is how I get information out. Um, like here's a new pin design, like who else likes this show? Like let's connect. Um, I also, because I'm a little bit addicted to watching TikToks, I save TikToks that I like so I can make, I need them to be appreciated by other people. So I will reshare them because my boyfriend's French so we don't have the same sense of humor and it kills me when I show it to him and he doesn't laugh. Like I literally die inside a little bit. Like I need someone else to validate my humor and laugh at this too. So so I'll save TikToks and repost them and Mondays we'll do like feel good stories and Fridays we do dancing videos and everywhere in between it's just like other ones that I like. Um, so it's kind of like, yes, for me to also share these other things that I like and connect in that way and make people laugh and stuff. Um, but I think recently it's been like very like, oh, here's some information. Here's like a little bit of like behind the scenes because like, guess what? I think that's part of like, you know, not being a big company. It's like, guess what? This is what it like looks like to run a business. And I can share that with you. Um, so you guys understand like, what it takes, like what happens. Um, and I think sharing part of that story just makes people a little bit more invested and appreciate the product more, um, which is always like a wonderful thing um, that if, you know, they're writing in my notepad, they say a small prayer for me because I know I'm up till 2 a.m. packing. I I will receive that prayer with a lot of... <laughs> A lot of welcomeness in my heart. Um, the prayer box but, is always open. Yeah, it's, it's always open. <laughs> Put all my blessings, please. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that's part of like growing together, the journey together. People like, if they like you as a person, like they're happy to see that you're doing well um, and they're happy to go on that journey with you. And I think that's part of like being a small business. Um, when it comes to TikTok, I have not totally, even though I indulge, <laughs> I have not totally figured out how I approach TikTok because um, it's a very different platform. And while I did do film in school, it was more in like an editing sense of longer things. So while I can understand blogging a little bit more, I TikToks are a little bit more difficult for me. I'm still trying to figure them out. <laughs> it's a lot of montage stuff. Um, uh, for during COVID, it was a little bit of dancing. I will, I will say. Yeah, I don't know yeah. TikTok yet so much though. I've definitely <laughs> relegated to some of the stupider trends, like the the Beyonce drop trend when everyone's just kind yes. of like dropping <laughs> yeah. low. Like I threw on a turtle costume. I'm like, you know what? This is what we got to do. Okay, cool. And I did that for a little bit, and then I was just like, I would just go through my TikTok feed and just get so like pissed off, for lack of better <laughs> no, words. No. It was just bad for my mental health so I actually deleted it off my phone like it's off the table I'm done with it it's just like if it's going to make you angry then then what's the point of just like thinking that you have to make content yeah. for that platform no but during COVID that was literally a form of physical exercise for me like learning <laughs> it's, like, it's like no it's helping you but my health is still intact so like it was it was a give and take relationship and like given I love watching people dance it makes me so happy I cannot dance well but I if I have joy in making it or I I see a trend and I'm like oh that's fucking hilarious like I have a really good idea knowing that I made other people laugh will, will motivate me to make the TikTok so it's like weird even though I haven't totally figured it out I still enjoy it but then they're definitely more effort yeah than, than the other things so it's like oh uh let's figure out where my energy is you know, percentage wise going. So it's that whole thing too, but yeah. Well, I'm glad you said that, you know, part of you wants to like entertain your audience. Cause it's like, that's, you know, part of me wants to like create entertaining content and, and, you know, make you laugh and have like a good, I don't know, 30 seconds, just like a little break from like the day from reality. And it's just yeah. me being like dumb or sharing like an old Ninja Turtle toy or just being silly. Like I think that kind of goes a long way in uh, just kind of feeding the community, building a brand, building a business and stuff oh, like yeah. that. And so I, I love think... like humor, like humor is so big, like in your life, you know, like it can literally change. Like people have literally said, oh, I was having a horrible day and I looked at the TikToks you posted and I feel so much better. <laughs> so just hearing that is like, ah, oh, yes, my TikTok, con <laughs> TikTok, my TikTok consumption is validated, you know, <laughs> a little bit. So I love I'm it. 
Yeah. What kind of um what kind of content works for you? Like on let's just say Instagram, for example. Are you seeing like reels kind of perform well for you or are you still seeing photos work? Well I cannot for you? figure out like this kind of goes back to me giving up on like understanding social media like a year and a half ago and just doing it. Um, but reels are such a hit or miss for me, given I'm cheating a bit because again, percentages of energies, I just repost the TikToks in there. I cannot. I cannot, you know, so I know they don't like that, but I'm like, sorry, this is all you're getting from me today. Um, but, um, I've noticed Chappie always does very well, but let's be honest. No one can say no to a really cute, fluffy bunny rabbit in an Instagram post. So Chappie naturally always does. Yes. Very well. His pins always do very well. (laughs) Um, Um, but I, it's so far, it's just like mostly been like pin pictures or um, like behind the scenes kind of stuff of Chappie. Um, the TikToks, I hate saying, but anything that has your face in it does so well compared to a picture, like the screenshot of, or what do you call it? Like the preview picture being a picture of a pin. Mm-hmm. Um, those are very low to average engagement for me anything that has my face on it just like has three times as many viewers which I hate because I (laughs) lately I'm just like yeah I'm not putting on makeup for this or like I look a mess today no (laughs) so I hate that that's the case because I definitely do not make those videos very often (laughs) hold on hold on can I get let me get a face let's do our thumbnail right now of of a TikTok video? No, no, no. Just like just like of us talking, but like give me like a give me the thumbnail. She said what? <laughs> You'll never guess what <laughs> happens next. <laughs> I hate that clickbait shit. <laughs> no. All right. Well, I'm excited for this episode to go viral just because of that. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> what is so? You talked. You mentioned uh, Pop Shop Live, um, and. I've had uh, past guests, um, Data Crew, Cool Electric Creation, BB Create, you know, they're all on Pop Shop with the Pin Lab show. Uh, Kind of walk me through your experience and why you like Pop Shop Live. Um, So if you, for some reason, don't know what Pop Shop Live is, it's basically um, Instagram Live meets the shopping network. Um, And it's really great. I thought it was such a great piece during COVID, especially because... Um, we couldn't do conventions. So it was a very interactive digital way to do conventions where I could live, like drop new products. People could ask me, what's the size of that? Like, does it, does it, how many posts does it have on the back? Whereas if I just posted up on, you know, my website, I'm maybe getting an Instagram message and maybe it's sold out. Maybe they couldn't get it, you know, things like that. It's like a super delayed interaction. Um, so I really liked the back and forth, especially because these are fandom based pins. You know, I'm showing, I made this, all the comments are like, oh my God, I can't believe this is such a great feature. You know, like, oh, did you see this episode? And we can interact like, like I would at a convention and not just that because everyone's in a live show together, unlike a convention, they're finding other people that buy pins for me that like the same thing. So it's really created like a couple of friendships and, um, there's been a couple of times where someone's like, oh, I have this to trade if no one got it this time. And you see Instagram tags being exchanged in the comments and stuff. So it's like such a great, like not just for me, but like for the members of your community to, to connect with each other as well. It's been such a great tool for that. Um, but I think during COVID, it was an amazing tool since we couldn't do conventions live. Um, with conventions coming back now, um, I think maybe it will drop a little bit, but you have so many people that can't make it to conventions. Like I'm in California. Can I say I will ever be in a convention all the way on the East coast of New York? I'm not sure. And I'm selling. How dare you? Yeah. (laughs) You guys are expensive Um, (laughs) to fly to. (laughs) Also have to take time off work. I have to, um, but I I literally just did all that stuff to get out to California. So I know, I know. I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally using all my earned vacation time to work. (laughs) So it's like weird. But anyways, um, so it's like with me saying that, like, I can't say that someone on the East coast will ever, we will ever be able to meet at a convention, you know, 
So it's like still a great engagement tool for people that you may not be able to meet ever in person. Um, so I think it's just been really great in that sense. Like, uh, and also it's just great to sell to like, ha- and have like music in the back and it's like punk rock. From the <laughs> so it's like just great. <laughs> so that's been good. Um, but yeah, it's been a really great experience for me. I've been really enjoying it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've done it a couple times and it's just like, oh, this is just like a random Saturday or, or every, every now and then they'll do the uh, enamel market. And it's yeah. just like, oh, I'm just hanging out like in my office and uh, I ma- made a couple hundred bucks and I got to connect with some people and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's really cool. But it's also really cool seeing how other people run their their live shows. I, th- yeah, I don't know yeah. what the proper word is. But some of them have like a schedule or like every 15 minutes they'll they'll drop a new pin or they'll do a giveaway or something like that. Is that something that you do? I have a couple of pin makers that definitely do the agenda thing and I can definitely see the advantage to it. I don't because I cannot stick to it. It's tough. Yeah. I think you can probably guess by this far in the episode, I talk a lot. So if anyone gets me started, like, did you see the new episode of Doctor Who? I'm like, oh my God, this is about to be a 15 <laughs> minute chat in Pop Shop. <laughs> so so um, the schedules do not work for me. Um, but that's also one of the reasons why I always do a Pop Shop and a Web Drop. Um, because, you know, valid points, people are like, I don't want to download another app. I can't spend two hours with you on a Friday. I literally just want to get these pins from you. Totally valid. And I get that. Um, so I, I, I know some creators don't, some just stay on websites, some just do pop shop. Um, but I, that's why one of the reasons I usually split my stock between the two platforms. Interesting. Yeah. That's good to know. I know people out there are probably interested, you know, because they can't get out to cons or most of their fan base is like located elsewhere. Like yeah. my fan base, a good chunk of it is located in California. So it was actually pretty cool getting to like meet these people. But it had been like six years of just yeah. like going back and forth in the DMs. And it's like, oh, my God, you're real. You're here. It's <laughs> wild. <laughs> no, but you know what my problem is because I met most I started like more forming a relationship with people during COVID. I recognize people by their Instagram picture, but not like their actual name. <laughs> and then when I see them in person, they have like their mask on. So I'm like, uh like you saw I saw when when we I, I was like, do I know you? And they're like, we met three times, you know, and I'm like, mm, I I can't tell with the mask. I feel so bad, but like, I literally cannot connect the face. Like, even though I've maybe seen a picture when you see it in person, I just cannot connect the face to the, oh, it's so difficult. It's embarrassing sometimes too. It's bad for me too. But, and, and it's like, even without the masks, like I'll, I'll recognize a face, but I probably won't remember a name because so much is happening during these days when I'm like in person, like yeah. making sure that we're running stuff efficiently. We're helping everyone. And it's just, all this stuff coming at you. So uh, you're not alone on that. Yeah. I will uh, literally call a pin creator, their Instagram name for like a whole year. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, okay. So I want to ask you about, and, and I think this might be like one of our last topics um, because now we're bind, bound, binded, bound by the, uh, the zoom time limit. Yes. Um, your jackets, your Ida jackets. And, and, and I want to expand this into the whole Ita, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, ITA, bags, Ita bags, like, talk to me about this this whole world, because I'm not super tapped into this, but I know that there are bags dedicated to showing off pins. Oh, yeah. They've been around for a while, but you're taking it to the next level, and you're doing freaking varsity jackets. So I will say this is not an original idea. Um much the trendsetter for a lot of pin stuff has been the anime community that I saw it originally. Um, I actually had seen, and I don't know if I'm saying it right either because I've never heard anyone else say it. I've literally just seen it written, but I say Ida as well. I'd seen Ida backpacks like years before I started seeing them in other fandom bases. And after my first leaky, I had actually drawn one and I was like, oh my God, I would love to make this. And then, um, my good friends at Oddman and Tweak came out with one and they were like the first ones to kind of make it in the magical community and it blew up. Um, and I still have my sketches. So hopefully, um, 
maybe VIP information for you. I am working on my bag slowly. But Ooh, sure. Podcast like, exclusive. Like literally five years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but um, one of the other things I had seen in the anime community was Eden jackets. And I was like, wow, what a unique idea. I just love that. Like, I personally, um, I'm not a purse person. I'll wear a backpack to like, you know, a park or something, but day to day, I try to have a pockets on me. Um, so I just love the idea of an Eda jacket and I hadn't seen that in the magical community yet. And Eda bags seem to be well received. So I kind of approached my um, friend at Odman and Tweak and was like, hey, like I have this idea. Um, I'm a little bit intimidated by it. Like, would you like to work on this with me? Also, maybe this is like a bad, but I don't know how to vector and he knows how to vector. Um, so, <laughs> so, so how That's do you fine. for the vector? I had to, <laughs> yeah. I've had to learn how to vector like a couple years, like into doing this, you know, I'd work with like some of my designer friends or people on Fiverr to kind of help me get there. But yeah. uh, I don't think you're alone in, in, in that so yeah and even with the pins i've been very lucky that my manufacturer is like yeah i'll i'll work with a png file it's fine i was like thank yeah. god <laughs> um so yeah so thank god um he said yes though because he kind of took the lead with it um and he also does it full time so he was able to stay up and like up early and communicate with this manufacturer and everything um so it was an amazing process seeing how a like given I've done t-shirts, but jackets like a whole nother thing. So it was an amazing process to see how that would develop. Um, and so we finally got the proofs. They debuted at Leaky Con Orlando last weekend, and now they're currently up for pre-sale. So it's been a, like a really exciting ride. So we'll see. Um, hopefully um, everything goes smoothly. <laughs> but Yeah, it's we're really excited about it. Yeah. And hopefully everything on my end goes smoothly. We'll, we'll get this podcast out relatively soon yeah <laughs> um where can people kind of get more information about these var varsity jackets or ida i'm sorry not varsity jackets. no they're too. varsity jackets too but yeah i don't know what to call them. varsity, varsity ida jackets. Style. yeah yeah um so if they see me on instagram or if they go to my website kimchicreative.com everything's kimchi creative by the way um, weird. No one else had that handle. Um, but, um, if you go to either, you will have, um, on the homepage of my website, there'll be a link over to the presale. It's being hosted on their website. Um, and also the same with the Instagram bio links. Um, the very first option is like the link to the presale information. Um, so we're extending that deadline, but those will close August 21st for, oh, so this podcast should hopefully go out on the 18th. Yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> you'll have a couple so days. <laughs> you'll have to get on that because these things are really cool. And I've personally never seen uh, Ida jackets before. So I think that that's um, more on the innovative side. Um, well, I, I guess maybe not so much since like the anime community yeah the anime it. community is on it you got like everyone's downplaying the anime community but they're on it you guys like i'm just saying trendsetters <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta tap into the anime community somehow. yes Some ninja turtle anime pins would be kind of yes fun. exactly <laughs> Um, but that's cool. And you're also, you're also doing, so you got the bag, you know, hopefully in, in the near future. Hopefully soon. Yes. Yeah. And the cork boards. I think that's awesome too. Yeah, I haven't shown those off yet, but um, those will be coming around in October. Um, we have in October, we'll have Wondrous Wizard Weekend, which is like a huge online wizarding pin event uh, between a bunch of wizard pin makers, like all around the US and Canada. And I think we have one person in the UK as well. Um, but it's like all over. Um, so it's really fun and it's all online. Um, so if you want more information on that, um, they'll definitely be coming out more soon on Instagram come October and then October. In October, I'm also going to LeakyCon. <laughs> so a lot of magical stuff happening in October <laughs> for me. But it'll be really exciting. That's cool. Um, so I got two more questions for you. Yes. Where do you see kimchi evolving? Or kind of like, yeah, where do you see yourself in the next couple years? I don't want to say five year. What's your five-year plan? Kimchi Ooh, creative. I thought you plan. <laughs> that sounds too formal. But what do you kind of hope to uh, to do with your brand? Um. Well, 
I would, I think the hope for a lot of small business people is going full-time. I would love to end up going full-time with this eventually. Um, I want to continue to expand things outside of enamel pins and notepads um, with other things that I really love. Like I love stationery, so <laughs> like stuff like that. Um, there's also like other products that I've had ideas for, but I need to learn certain programs for. So things like that. I'm just hoping to be a little bit, I guess in a couple of years, a little bit more well-educated and real well-rounded when it comes to um, how I can make and design a lot of things. Cause I do think currently like most artists, like I do use um, Procreate, but I can't go much beyond Procreate and Photoshop. And I think that is limits while it doesn't like stop me from doing anything. I think it definitely limits my abilities a little bit. So I think if I can educate myself more, I can definitely grow a little bit more with that stuff too. Um, but I'm not, I just enjoy everything so much right now. It's hard to see a clear plan for myself right now, other than like, I guess my big goal is like, oh, full time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would love to do more live events, um, expand, you know, the fandoms and um, create unique designs as well a lot more. So I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I love it. I but, don't have like a plan. It's yeah. just just keep doing what you're doing have fun with it at least that's uh, like my mentality for because if it, you start to get stressed out or whatever then it's time you kind of have to take a step back and figure yeah. out why you're doing this you know like we said at the uh, at the panel we're yeah. fans making stuff for other fans and when that process of connecting with other fans or making stuff for other fans isn't as enjoyable then you kind of have to reevaluate why you're doing this yeah, exactly. It's like definitely something in my life that brings me a lot of, while it is work, it definitely brings a lot of light into my life. And so if it was something else, it would like literally be that I'm working two jobs that, you know, like not to say my day job doesn't bring me any joy, but it's definitely uh, more work for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I don't want it to take, take away from the joy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last question, and I love ending the podcast with this question because I usually get wholesome answers, and it just kind of like completes the picture for the guest. <laughs> okay. um, but Jess, what are the little things in life for you? Um, I think the little things in life, <sighs> that's a tough one, actually. The littlest thing is my rabbit. Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> literal answers, baby. I love it. <laughs> um, I think the little things are the things that make you smile without you realizing it. Um, because truly, if you're not analyzing to smile, it's something that's bringing you joy naturally and organically. Um, but I think those are the little things that matter. So even though with pins, it's like, even though packing is like a real ordeal sometimes, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, like I put on a good music and I'm, you know, a good podcast and I'm just sitting there like laughing and packing pins and, you know, the thought crosses my, even though I'm like, oh my God, I have so many left. It's like the thought crosses my mind. Like, wow. Like I'm so lucky. I have so many left. Like, you know, two years ago I had one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think those are the little things for sure. I love it. Well, that brings us to the end of the podcast. You survived. <laughs> and we survived through all the hiccups and challenges. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn technology. For real. Um, I might have to upgrade to like a paid Zoom account or something like that and write it off as a business expense. Business 101 stuff. Yes. Um, yes. Isn't that the wonderful thing about a lot of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> business expense <laughs> yeah if i was smart i definitely have would have written off like a lot more things but uh i plan on having an extensive meeting with my uh, accountant uh, to review all that stuff but um jess uh yep. i'm gonna give you the floor uh any kind of shout outs that you wanna you want to give let the people know kind of where they can find you and more information about your pin shop um take it away yeah. Um, well, you, like I said, you can find me on almost anything, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook under Kimchi Creative. It's um, creative with a K in Kimchi, like the Korean food. Um, 
my website is kimchicreative.com and on the website and the Instagram, if you're interested in the Eda jacket, you can see pictures. Um, we're going to do a live and a little bit of a walkthrough of the jacket, which we'll reshare. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about that, there's lots of media that's coming your way. And as always, like, feel free to message if you have any questions. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. You're going to be at some cons too coming up? Yeah, well, um, I will be, well, this will come out next week. So Ronan Market is this weekend. But um, I will be at LeakyCon in October, um, Wonders Wizard Weekend, which is all online. If you guys are interested in attending, that's free. It's online. Um, and I just got an email two days ago saying I got des- accepted to DesignerCon in November. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Oh, I'm congrats. Really that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So that'll, another thing. <laughs> 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 another another thing to start stressing about yeah no mm, okay yeah <laughs> so, mm, mm. <laughs> that's behind the scenes we're gonna do like a bonus podcast where we're just gonna let out all the stressors as yeah it exactly to vending for a show <laughs> everyone scream what they're stressed about right now <laughs> <laughs> uh well jess thank you so much for your time your your expertise your wisdom and just kind of uh, opening the door into the world of Kimchi Creative and just showing us a little bit about the uh, the person running the shop, the behind the scenes, the struggles, the successes, all that stuff is awesome. And I'm sure a lot of people um, will appreciate you sharing everything. So thank you. Thank you for asking me to chat with you. <laughs> Of course. It was awesome. And just for the record, we didn't really know too much about each other's brands prior to um, Cool Letra Creation. Yeah. Putting together we the panel. We were connected because of San Diego Comic-Con. I know. That's our connector. Truly so now, happy. Not just- <laughs> but now we have to go every year. And now it's just. This is true. Yes. Yes. Oh, such year. a burden. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, we actually, okay, so we got, we have a couple minutes. We actually had a decent amount of people show up for our panel, didn't we? Yes. I was like, it was across the street in another like building at a very odd time at the end of the day. I was not expecting the crowd we had at all. I know. I was and pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. People still were coming in after the panel started. And then there yeah. were people that, hung out afterwards to like talk to, to, to us about whatever questions they had and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and everyone uh, was so nice. Super nice. Yeah. So nice. Oh, it's shout out to, um, uh, Teal, Teal Cup Teal Studios. Cup. Yeah. She was, uh, Gail, I believe her name was, she was front row center, uh, there for our, for our panel. And that was just a joy. Eventually we'll have her onto the podcast. Chatting with me afterwards. She's so sweet. So sweet. I know. She's got a huge following too. Yeah. She has, well, she has, she has a super cute stuff. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. I found out about her through Pop Shop Live. Oh, see, there you go. It was, it's all, it all comes full circle somehow some way (laughs) but um yeah until next time i'm sure i'm sure we'll have you back on the podcast chat more about the jackets or kind of what's to come in the future um but until then i would love that too um until then i hope you have a rest of uh i hope you have a good rest of your night blah 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 blah. i need some sleep it's getting Uh, au revoir au revoir good night (laughs) yeah yeah all all the pleasantries you know i mean well Yes. (laughs) Um, And uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. All right. Thank you again. Take it easy, Jess. (laughs) Bye. Bye.